Nathan Stremple here hosting some orange carpet interviews at Basketball Australia's Night of Nights, the NBL and WNBL MVP Awards Night. Now also you've had a very successful basketball career. One thing that didn't happen was an Olympic medal. Tell us, deal or no deal, if you could swap the 93 championship for an Olympic medal. The question on everyone's lips is how do you actually pronounce your last name? I don't know. It's whatever goes these days. As long as I'm not going to offend. So I'm joined by the great Liz Cabbage. Now, with Chris Golding, your Melbourne Tigers all but locked into a player spot and a 50-point game for yourself. How do you feel, buddy? Uh, you know, we haven't locked it in yet. There's still a little bit that can happen, but that's a giant step closer. And it feels good to try and get this franchise back to where we think we belong. Chris, put that on top of a 17-point fourth quarter against New Zealand Friday, that's 67 points in five quarters. I'm thinking about calling the fire department you're that hot. You should play five quarter games. Chris, you set numerous records uh, on the way this year. I think it was 17 years in between your two WNBL championships, but one record you may not be aware of, you actually set a record for thanking the most amount of people after you were awarded the championship. Now, after that long list and calling people back, what I want to know, did you actually miss someone in the end? Um, yeah, I actually miss thanking the WNBL and Basel Australia, but... Uh... I'm joined here by Cedric Jackson, the 2012-2013 MVP from the New Zealand Breakers. Cedric, how does it feel to be acknowledged as the best player in the league? I'm going to come to both of you on this. I want to know some of your thoughts on the WNBL awards. Who are we going to see winning MVP? Who are some of the All-Star 5 chances? I've also got Jenna in my All-Star 5, um, so I voted for her, so I hope she makes it. <laughs> Um, yeah, but, uh, you know. it's, nice, it's nice to know you're locked in for one vote. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. Now finally, let's go back to game 393. A few seconds left. M. Bradke, textbook close out as Vlahov lets that three go. What were you feeling at the time? And Suze, you, you put yourself in pretty elite company as a back-to-back -back winner. Tell us, how are things different this year, having won last year? How did you feel, compared to last year, how did you feel coming in this year? Thanks, Steve. I'm here with Coach Chris Anstey. Chris, a record-breaking 44-point final quarter to come from behind against New Zealand. Did you record your three-quarter time speech and play it to the boys tonight before the game? Oh, yeah, what I said after the game. Alice, tell us who you think some of the ladies are looking best dressed tonight. Uh, Jenna O'Hay, Rachel Joan, and of course, Liz Cambridge, looking stunning as always tonight. Nice to give a shout out to some of your mates. Let's, let's go back to the basketball for a second. And the WNBL MVP count, uh, Christy and Susie featuring there, uh, Kath McLeod up around it. What are your thoughts on how that one will play out towards the end? I think it'll go down to the wire. Yeah, you're talking about fitting in. A few of us were talking about, have you had a chance to learn the offensive structures or anything yet? How many trainings have you had for the guys? Such a close WNBL season and sadly you guys falling out towards the end, but a nice night to celebrate tonight. Yeah, it is. It's wonderful to be here tonight. Shane, Chris Golding, 29 points in the first half. How do you go about stopping him in the second? Uh, we certainly have to make some adjustments. Just finally, you obviously played with Anstey before when he was playing. How is it now, that player-coach relationship? Yeah, uh, it it's, was interesting, I guess. We... You mentioned Matty Knight. Damien Martin's just won Defensive Player of the Year. Perth going great in the house that Nick Marvin built at Perth Arena over there. And you've just beaten New Zealand going to the playoffs. That must leave you guys feeling good with the playoffs ahead. Oh, it's been amazing. We're excited to see you back on court and we're excited that Melbourne's got balls now. So yeah. tell us a little <laughs> bit about uh, your role in the team. Leonard Copeland, so 93 final, take us back there. One of the loudest, craziest crowds you've ever played in front of. Where do you find that zone in the third quarter? Right, it was, it was uh, one of those times where I just got hot. Now, the other big award tonight is a teammate of yours is a particularly big fan of Samantha Jade. Just tell us, has <laughs> Lucas Walker been talking about uh, meeting her or anything behind the scenes? Well, he's got his plan all laid out. He's got the, uh, the run sheet in his pocket, so he knows when she's coming on and off, and uh, he's going to have a crack. Also, uh, you're a bit of a Samantha Jade fan. You're excited coming along, not just to see the basketball awards. Off, man. No, no, no. She's a great singer, great talent. Um, be good. Looking forward to seeing her perform. Because of you was untrue, rolling her around in the car that I bought of you. Now, baby, drop them keys. Hurry up before your taxi leaves. My great guests, Steve Matthews and Chantella Pereira, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks thank for having you. us. Uh, very good to have you here. Nathan Stremple's my name. Thank you for joining us this week on the Super TV Show. All right, Nathan Stremple working a sideline for us, and I tell you what. He is a hoop junkie. He is a hoop junkie, and I'd say uh, good first up appearance by Nathan Streppel. Terrific work.